Thank you for downloading this Pomozzi Creatives podcast. The school's engagement strand aims to facilitate creative collaborations inspired by the curriculum. This series will spend time with people involved in the Creative Transitions program, which will focus on supporting PSHE needs and raising young people's aspirations. To find out more, head to our website, pomozicreatives.com. So I'm here at um, the wonderful Admiral Lord Nelson School. i um, got a lot of love for this uh, school. And I'm here with two students, two lovely students, and the deputy head teacher, Miss, Mrs. Katie Holness. Thank you, Miss Holness, for joining us. No problem at all. Nice to be here. And we've just done a project, haven't we, um, that's um, supported by the Community Inclusion Grant. Um, and in the project, we wanted to work with young people of colour and just find creative ways to engage them um, with inspirational people and inspirational activities. And I have two participants from the project. Would you mind, lovely ladies, saying your name for me? My name is Madia. So it's Madia. My and name's Tanisha. And Tanisha. Thank you so much, um, ladies, for joining us. I've just got a couple of questions, one well, more than a couple. I've just got a few questions just to kind of ask you about um, your lived experience in the city, really, because um, it would be great to get more of an understanding of, of where young people are at and what we can do to help support that. So, you were born in the city, were you? But you were born in, you told me last night. Try to remember. Kenya. Yes, yeah, in Mombasa, yeah. Mombasa. So you were born in Mombasa. When did you arrive in Portsmouth? In 2009. 2009. And you were how old? One time? years old. Well, I can't do my maths that quickly. <laughs> so you were one. So you're more or less a Pompey lady. Um, yeah. You were born in Portsmouth? I was born in Portsmouth, yeah. yeah um, so you've mostly lived, lived most of your lives in Portsmouth, both of you. What do you love about the city? Well, I love how everybody's like, they just mind their own business. And like, um, like before, in, there's been a real change in diversity as well. And like, even the small adverts on the beach and stuff, they're showing like people of different colours in like the new advertising plan for the new beach construction. Mm -hmm. And it was just really lovely to see how much they've improved in these last few years. Because before it was not that much mm. of um, a range in diversity. And now I think, especially after COVID, it's mm. changed a lot. Mm. And that's like one thing that I'm really proud of Portsmouth for doing. Thank you for sharing that, Madia. That's, that's great. And is there anything that you like, Tanisha, about the city? No, my house well, is really basic. It's just the beach. The beach. Do you know, I love the beach. I always fun ever since I've lived in Portsmouth um, if I'm more than like an hour away from the beach I really feel it mm. <laughs> so I once went to have you been to Leeds no oh my god it's a lovely city but it's it's like a concrete jungle and I remember feeling really mm. claustrophobic because I mm. thought I need the sea yeah my sister is in Milton Keynes but grew up here yeah. and she feels the same way mm. when she comes down the first place she wants to go to the seaside yeah. you really miss no, it when you haven't yeah. got it <laughs> Yeah, so I, I'm, it's an important thing for me. Really love that. Um, is there anything that you find really difficult about living in the city or challenging? I think, um, I think that's before, obviously, it was a bit harder to fit in because people would sometimes, like, come up to you and then ask questions like mm. it's good to see that they're curious mm. but sometimes ask it in a very like um blunt way okay so, so asking questions about your culture or yeah and just randomly you know like if it's in a like curious way like that's mm. that's nice that you know that they want to know but um so for yeah. the sake of um Madia, for the sake of the people listening would you mind just kind of telling us what your culture is so, um, originally, my parents, well, my mum is from a Pakistani background, okay. and um, my dad has Pakistani origins and also Kenyan as well. <clears throat> and so, for example, some of the um, scenarios that it's happened to, for example, like 
we've been just walking around the city mm. and um like a group of teenagers just come up to us like um like saying things in a really oblivious and a blunt manner okay. which probably wasn't the best thing to do but um uh, yeah as in asking questions to you in an, a blunt manner or just making observations like as in like um saying things and okay. then just asking rhetorically with things okay. like yeah. insults type things do you yeah know? Okay. yeah okay thank you for showing that Nadia. and Tanisha is there anything that you find tricky about living in the city I think especially when I was younger like the diversity mm. I'm pretty sure when I was like, in primary school I was the, one of the only coloured people there like okay. there was like two of us mm. and that was my cousin, me and my cousin so okay. and especially like the so that, that get thrown at you sometimes mm. not by everyone I'm not saying that everyone's racist here but like some people mm. so have you guys experienced m- much racism then not mm. really like yeah. if I if I have experienced it it's always going to be like minor mm. I think yeah. um, Tanisha just for the sake of the people listening would you mind just giving us your um, ethnic background um, both my parents are Bengali so yeah, they both moved. My mum moved here after she got married in mm-hmm. 2009. Mm-hmm. And my dad moved here when he was 13 with my grandfather and my grandma. Oh, oh that's lovely. Um, I, it's really encouraging to me to think you haven't received blatant racism. That's, you know, because that would be sad if, if that was like a regular occurrence for you. It's a tricky thing, though, isn't it? Because sometimes, because people have a, their own lived experience, people who are not of colour, they might treat you a certain way, um, but that's not based on what they think of you necessarily. It's based on what they assume about you. Do you feel like that might have been a situation where people were making um, statements when you give that example of being in a group and people coming up to you kind of saying things, do you think that was about racism or do you think that was about people just not really thinking through what they're saying? I think, well, the, they weren't questioning the other passerbys, mm. but when they saw us, like, some of the comments that they said made it a little bit obvious mm. that it was, like, an insult. OK, yeah. So that, that sounds a little bit more intentional which is a shame. How have you found school life, generally? Like, as I've said, it was, like, very my... Now I've got, like, 100 people that are of colour in this school. Mm. But before, when I was younger, there wasn't really many of us, so I never really had that, like, role model to look up to. I only had, like, my family around me to really look up to. Okay. So do you feel like you've got some really positive role models now? Yeah. Um... And have you felt like you needed role models that were people of colour, or it's like, I think, I think I this wholeness think. is pretty awesome. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, like, I was younger, so I didn't really understand the concept of, like, skin colour and what it actually meant. Like, I didn't actually understand. Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about now. So in terms of role models oh, now, now... Yeah, I've got, yes, yeah, so many people that I could just look up to. Yeah. Do you feel like you've got enough role models of colour, though, within that? Yeah, like, I think I know more people now. Yeah. It's just like, I could go up to anyone. You know, oh, that's good. And how have you found school in that sense? Yeah, um, at the start when I first joined the school, there were a few challenges, but um, I've overcome that now. And I like that there's more people of colour in the school, especially in the new young years. There's a few more people. Mm. And that was really nice to see, like, more ranges of diversity mm-hmm. so it made me feel like I'm not the only one. Oh, that's, that's really positive. Ms. Holtz, how have you found, um, how long have you been in the school? 25 years. Oh my goodness. A long time. That's unheard of in this day and age. You must love Oh, I school. do, I do. This is the only place I've ever taught, right from the university. Ah, so you must have seen it evolve as well, like... Um, culturally, maybe. Yeah, well. definitely, and I think you're you're absolutely right, girls. I think that um, possibly over the last five years, we've seen absolute difference in terms of the diversity of, of children of ethnic backgrounds coming into the school, yeah. um, which we didn't have probably yeah. five to ten years ago. I think 
I would like to think it's partly um, that people want to come here. I know mm. that the two um, single sex schools, so when Trafalgar was City Boys mm-hmm. and City Girls, I think sometimes some of the communities would choose the single sex education. Mm-hmm. Those schools going has, has levelled the playing field, I guess, in terms of what people choose. But I also know talking to some parents uh, three or four years ago, um, that was. Um, uh, Bengali parents actually they were sort of actively not choosing Admiral Lord Nelson a few years ago because they were conscious that we didn't have a lot of, of students of colour and so they were worried for their children to be in this school and actually I think as that's grown it, it's snowballing because it's growing so people are more comfortable so people, more people are coming mm-hmm. so it's more comfortable so it's, it's lovely actually but that's been a, a definite change okay. definitely people, certainly parents used to talk to me not many yeah. but a handful would say to me that's what we're worried about that you are a very white school so it's lovely to see actually I think you're right now we have got absolute change I mean I think our percentage of of non-white children non-white British children is about 15 or so percent but definitely it's skewed there's many more younger year group which is quite exciting isn't it really oh it's really good to hear and is there anything that you would maybe want different as part of your school experience um Oh, no. I think um, even though we do do black history like in your seven and stuff, I think we just need to learn about it more because there's, so, there's so many people out, like, out there that's just like, un- uneducated like even teachers of us that's like, just un- uneducated so I think we, just, we all just need to learn mm. Do you think across the curriculum sorry you don't mind asking, yeah. do you mean so in history we need to look more at, at black history but I was thinking after we did the cooking session you know, should it be that actually within your food tech lessons, it's food from all different cultures that we're learning to cook? And I, I was thinking, should we widen the net? You know, so are you thinking across the curriculum? Yeah, like across everything. Well, obviously you can't really do it like in math and stuff, but like, yeah, stuff like that, like cooking, mm. ethnic food, mm. and like seeing ethnic culture and mm. background and stuff like that. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tanisha. Mardi, do you have any thoughts? Um, yeah, I agree with the idea of like what we could do in free tech and not just um, African culture but other cultures mm. as well um, because there's still other um, backgrounds that haven't been represented as Absolutely. much mm. for example um, like Bangladeshis mm. or um, Pakistanis like those type of backgrounds as well because yeah. um, we need to prioritise all of them equally yeah yeah, there was a young Kurdish mm. girl there last night. I was like, mm. oh, I'd love to, love to hear more about your culture. Yeah. You're quite rich in that sense. But it was quite interesting talking to her last night. It was the first time I'd spoke to her about that. And she was saying, we were talking about her cousin is in the school. And I said, oh, I said, I thought he was Turkish. And she said, oh, no, we're Kurds. She said, but we won't say. So she said, he says he's Turkish. So that's another thing to unpick. And in my ignorance, I was... Not 100% sure why. Why is that? Oh, mm. that's, oh that's amazing. But that's an issue as well, isn't it? You know, so I thought, oh, that's interesting. So we need to, educating is really important, isn't it? Thank you for sharing those thoughts. I mean, I, would, I could quite happily sit here and ask you questions all afternoon, but <laughs> that would be an advice in terms of you needing to eat something to start with. Um, on that note, so I have a question for you. I always like to finish with. Um... Is there anywhere that you really like hanging out with, in Port- hanging out in Portsmouth? Is there like anywhere you would go for some food, maybe? I really like Shake and Grill. It's on oh. Elm Grove Road, yeah. and it's really nice because um, they also have halal meat, which oh. is nice because I go for that option. Yeah. And they have amazing like milkshakes there, falafels, oh, nice. burgers, wraps, literally everything you can name. And Very nice. Um, I love it because like you can see so many people of different cultures coming into the shop and it's really nice. Oh nice. I know exactly what you mean. Have you tried the new one on the corner? Oh Fuegos, was... yeah. I went there the other day. I went there like the other day. Oh, so I'm feeling emotional just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Is it really it's really nice. Really yeah. good. Really good. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna give you some historical disclosure now. I ordered Fuegos the other day when I was on my own and I had to stop myself from 
when the delivery guy came, I just stopped myself from pretending it was somebody else. <laughs> Ow, because I wanted so much. I was like, yes, it is for me. But anyway, so you like shaking real. And, oh my gosh, yeah, they're um, probably Fuego. Kind of got yeah, Fuego? It's so like, annoying. So here's a question. If I could magically bring anyone, anyone from the past or anyone famous um, to hang out with you for a night at Shake and Grill on me <laughs> thank you for a nice budget there <laughs> or Fuegos on me two people who would you choose to hang out with and why? That's actually a really good question mm-hmm. I don't know and thank you like uh, for not choosing a Michelin star restaurant because I don't know if I could afford that but I can think I can pull up fame for uh, those restaurants so who are you going to have? past, present famous Know. Probably um, in the past of. Okay, I know everybody says this, but maybe like Rosa Parks, because oh, as like a woman of color, mm-hmm. like she really stood up there, and it was probably inspirational for other young mm-hmm. women. Mm-hmm. So I found that really mm-hmm. inspirational as well. Um, it was quite yeah. a radical thing she did, wasn't it? I think. We forget how radical that uh, protest was, that sound mm. protest was. Rosa Parks, good choice. Anyone else? Mardi? And I haven't really thought of the second one yet. That's okay. I'll give you Rosa Parks. What about you, Tanisha? Um, do you guys know Malala? The one that got shot in the head, yeah. Mm. With a pa- uh, and she, like, mm. she was just there for women right, women's rights and stuff. Like, as another woman of colour, and especially because she's from a South Asian background as well. Mm. I think she'd be quite cool. Did she get married last year? Yeah, I think she did. I think she got married. Wonderful. Oh, anyone else? I just there's some words sound really funny, but like Michael Jackson. Okay. Okay. I had a feeling you were gonna say that. Like, I mean, mean, he's a black man. He was a black man, yeah, and he obviously his skin colour changed. Don't know how, but like, yeah, and like how he dealt with racism from that, and like how Mm. even the black community was shutting him out, and also the white community. Mm. Yeah, he was. um, Quite a colourful character, wasn't he? Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Tanisha, for saying those. Um, it's been an absolute privilege uh, spending a little bit of time with you. Thank you, Tanisha. Thank you, Madia. Thank you as well. Thank you, Miss Thomas. No problem. It's been lovely.